Hi there, I'm Jeremy Krug, and in this AP Chemistry video, we're going to be taking a look at Unit 7, Section 7, which is about solving equilibrium problems. But in this video, specifically, what you can do if you have a very small equilibrium constant. Uh, there are some things that you can do to make your math a lot easier. If you're not subscribed yet, consider subscribing. That way you'll have the entire AP Chemistry curriculum here at your fingertips, along with review videos and problem walkthroughs and all kinds of great stuff. Uh, let's take a look at this problem here. It says at 600 kelvins, a chemist places 1.00 mole of sulfur trioxide gas into a 1.00 liter container and the reaction below takes place. After the reaction attains equilibrium, what will be the concentration of all three substances? And we have our balanced equation and, and then, then the equilibrium constant is given to us as well. Very small numbers we can see. So as you can see, I have an ice box set up, just like we learned about in the last video. That stands for initial, change, and equilibrium. So does the problem tell us the initial concentration of sulfur trioxide? We can figure that out, can't we? One mole divided by one liter, that's 1.00 molar for our concentration of SO3. Now it doesn't tell us what the initial concentrations of our other substances are, right? So we can call those zero. Like I said in the last video, if it doesn't tell us what the initial concentration of a substance is, it's safe to assume that it's zero. Now, it doesn't give us any other information, now does it? So we're going to have to do x, right? So instead of having an equilibrium value to do our math from, we're just going to have to say that, that the change in sulfur trioxide is a minus 2x, because it has to go down. This other side, the product side, has to go up, and SO2 is going to be plus 2x, since it's a 2 to 2 mole ratio. Now oxygen is going to go up as well, but only by 1x, isn't it, since it's a 2 to 1 ratio. So that's a plus x. So in our equilibrium row here, we have 1 minus 2x, 2x, and x. And so this is the point, as we saw in the last video, where we're going to plug these values into our equilibrium constant expression, which looks something like this. Products over reactants raised to the power of the coefficients. And now we're going to plug and chug into that equation, and we get you know, Kc is 5.9 times 10 to the negative ninth equals 2x quantity squared times x all over 1 minus 2x quantity squared. And it looks like we know that 2x squared times x is actually 4x cubed. On the bottom we can use the FOIL method here to evaluate what that is equal to. But as you can see we have a little problem. Uh, we are starting to get a very messy algebra problem here. And we could solve this using, I suppose, whatever methodology you might use for solving a cubic equation, but it's a messy problem. This is something that we like to avoid. So in chemistry, we have a rule, and it's called the 5% rule. Now let me show you how this works, and I'll tell you why it's called the 5% rule here in just a minute. Hopefully, at this point, you will realize that since this equilibrium constant is a very small number, you know, 10 to the minus 9th, a very, very small number. That means that almost none of this one molar sulfur trioxide is going to react. So that means that 1 minus 2x is very, very close to 1. And so because of that, I think it's safe for me to just ignore this minus 2x right here. And we can work the problem without that, that, that subtracted term there. And we should get an answer that is extremely close to the real answer. So let's go ahead and work the problem by ignoring this minus 2x. So once again, when I plug this into the equilibrium constant expression this time, I get the equilibrium constant equals 2x quantity squared times x all over 1 squared. And all of a sudden, this makes the problem a whole lot easier, doesn't it? I can cross multiply, and of course I have 4x cubed in that uh, term there. I can divide both sides by 4, and then I can use pretty much any scientific calculator to take the cube root 
of 1.48 times 10 to the negative ninth, and I find that x is equal to about 1.1 times 10 to the negative third. Now, let's double check and make sure that this is, is actually appropriate to do. What I want to do is take whatever that term was that I subtracted or was going to subtract, the, the minus 2x, and let's divide that by what it was going to be subtracted from to make sure that it's less than 5%. Because this only works if that subtracted value that you're ignoring is less than about 5%. So 2x would be, well, twice that number, and then divide it by 1.00, and then times that by 100. So yes, this is much less than 5%. It's 0.22%, so it's okay to do that. Now, let's go ahead and plug these numbers into the expression here and find out what our equilibrium concentrations are. So in the case of sulfur trioxide, it's 1 minus 2x. So if I take 1 and then subtract 2 times that x value, I get an answer of 0.998 molar. So my assumption was correct that that equilibrium concentration is pretty close to 1, isn't it? It doesn't go down by much. Then sulfur dioxide is 2x, so 2 times that x value will be 2.2 times 10 to the minus third molar. And then oxygen is just equal to x, so that's just 1.1 times 10 to the negative third molar. And we got to solve this problem without having to solve any cubic roots or quadratic equation or some other uh, fairly uh, complex uh, mathematical method. Now, this is called the 5% rule. And the reason that it's called that is because we can ignore that subtraction or, or that subtracted term as long as that term is less than 5% of what it's being subtracted from. That's why I did that little extra step there after uh, solving for x. Because if for some reason, you know, that value ended up being more than 5%, well, then I would have had to start all over and actually use a you know, use cubic roots or quadratic equation or, or some other method to solve for x. Now, this method works usually very well with equilibrium constants that are smaller than about 1 times 10 to the negative fifth. So if you have equilibrium constants larger than that, like times 10 to the negative fourth, uh, sometimes you're kind of on the bubble. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. If you're in that range of 1 times 10 to the negative third, this is probably not going to work. Um, but this works usually pretty best for significantly small equilibrium constants. Now, uh, in general chemistry in college, sometimes they will have you actually have values greater than 5% in which you'll have to actually use some other complex mathematical method to solve for x. But I do have some good news. If you're taking this class as an AP course in high school, you are never going to be asked to use the quadratic formula or some other complex method like cubic roots or quartic roots or something like that to solve for x. The 5% rule is going to work as long as you have that small equilibrium constant. So yes, that is going to work. So let's take a look at another example here. This one says that in air, nitrogen and oxygen gases react slightly forming nitrogen monoxide gas. If the partial pressure of nitrogen is 0.78 atmospheres and oxygen is 0.21 atmospheres, what will be the partial pressure of all three substances after the reaction? So there's our balanced equation. And we notice that our, our, our equilibrium constant is an exceedingly small number, you know, times 10 to the negative 31st. That is very, very small. So I feel very confident that the 5% rule is going to work here. So let's set up our ice box. And nitrogen, its partial pressure is 0.78. So I'll plug that in. Oxygen's partial pressure is 0.21 atmospheres. And the NO is not given to us. So that means that initially it is going to be 0. Now, it doesn't give us any other information, does it? So that means that our change is going to be minus x minus x, and the NO is going to be plus 2x, isn't it? Because we're on the, 
the other side of the arrow, so it's got to go up instead of going down, and there's that uh, 1 to 2 ratio, so that's why it's 2x. So our equilibrium values are going to be 0.78 minus x, 0.21 minus x, and 2x. So now I can plug these values into the equilibrium constant expression. I have to write that, don't I, because that's not given to me here. So it's Kp. So Kp equals the partial pressure of NO squared all over the partial pressure of nitrogen times the partial pressure of oxygen. So now I can plug these values in. I'm, I have the Kp given to me in the problem here. The NO is a 2x, and that's quantity squared, all over 0.78 minus x and 0.21 minus x. You might notice that if I were to use the FOIL method and you know FOIL this out, we would have a very complex math problem again, wouldn't we? And we, we try to avoid that. So we're going to use the 5% rule, and we're going to ignore that minus x, and we're also going to ignore this other minus x. So by doing that, now I can cross multiply. Over here, of course, this is 4x squared. When I cross multiply, I end up getting 4x squared equals 7.13 times 10 to the negative 32nd. And I can divide both sides by 4 to get x squared equals 1.78 times 10 to the minus 32nd. And now I can take the square root of both sides to find that x is 1.3 times 10 to the negative 16th. Now, I am very sure that that value for x is, is much less than 5% of either of these values it would be subtracted from, 0.21 or, or 0.78. But let's just double check, just to make sure. So I'll, I'll uh, divide that by one of the values. I'll use the, the, the smaller one there. And I end up finding it's like you know 6.4 times 10 to the minus 14th so an exceedingly small amount of this stuff gets reacted. So yeah, that's uh, way less than 5%. So now I can plug these back into the expressions here. Into, if you take your calculator and take 0.78 minus that x value, your calculator is just going to say 0.78. It doesn't really understand a difference between those two numbers in most cases, for most calculators anyway. Your O2, the same thing. If you try to subtract it, it's just 0.21, so that's that's fine. Now your NO is 2x, and so you have to times this by 2, and so your, your NO concentration, or, or that pressure rather, becomes 2.6 times 10 to the minus 16th atmospheres. I've been teaching chemistry for 24 years. I hope you're able to use uh, my knowledge and help you raise your AP score. If you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and subscribe if you would, and hit that thumbs up button. That really does help the algorithm. I do appreciate it, and I hope to see you in the next video where we're going to move on to AP Chemistry Unit 7, Section 8. Thanks for watching.